Welcome back to Berry Berry Life, bringing you easy and delicious vegan and vegetarian recipes from around the world. Today we're making a hearty and luxurious French onion soup, a soup of humble origins and simple ingredients, elevated to the pantheon of culinary creations. So let's get started. We'll start with the aromatics. We'll use two to three cloves of fresh garlic and mince them fine. For the volume of soup we're making, we really don't need a lot, just a tablespoon. People have been making onion soup for thousands of years, dating as far back as the Roman Empire. The French onion soup started in the 17th century in France, made with simple affordable ingredients. The modern version we're making, and is the most common now, started in the mid 19th century in Léal, the large open air market in Paris at the time. In addition to that, we'll need one bay leaf, a sprig of rosemary, and three to four sprigs of thyme, which is about a tablespoon. We wrapped it in a bundle using one of the sprigs, so it's easy to remove from the soup. For the star of the soup, the onions, we're going to use the sweet variety. You can also use yellow onions as well. The sweet onions have a higher percentage of sugar, which will come in handy during caramelization. Here we have two large onions, and they weigh about two to three pounds in total. That's right, you heard it correctly. These are some jumbo hulked out onions. We're going to use a radial cut, which is pole to pole. Another popular cut for this soup is the cross cut. This exposes the ring here, which helps the onions caramelize faster. However, we like the radial cut, so we'll go with that. This should yield about eight cups. We prefer the radial cut over cross cut because it doesn't disintegrate as much and yields stringy onions we love in the final product. However, if making a velouté variant of the soup where it's pureed, then cross cut would be better as it cooks faster. For this cut, we like to stand the onion up like this and then rotate it keeping the knife in the same general position. It yields these beautiful even petals. What is the onion's favorite exercise? Pilates. That's it. Our mountain of onion is ready. Traditionally, there is a crouton topping. For our crouton, here we'll use a rustic French bread over a baguette. The larger diameter will better cover the surface of the soup in the bowl and will be a better landing pad for the cheese. This bread has a nice crust and a soft center. We'll slice it into three quarter to one inch thick slices. The thicker slice allows for part of the bread to soak in the soup and the rest of the crouton to stay nice and crunchy. This end piece right here, it goes by many names, heel, end piece, or in Scotland it's called the outsider. I just call it the chef's piece as it's my favorite. In addition to the slices, we have a surprise pickup. This is called a French bread boule or French bread ball. Using a paring knife, we use a sawing motion to go around the top and remove the lid. Then go around the edge to separate the crumb interior from the sides. And gently scoop out the spongy interior using that sharp spoon hiding in the back of the drawer that you hoped would come in handy someday. Always being careful not to break through the crust on the sides or the bottom. There, we have a nice bread bowl with a perfect lid to go on top. For the interior we removed, we'll save that to dehydrate and grate into breadcrumbs. Now we'll transfer the bread pieces to our air fryer tray to toast the bread. An important step not to be skipped. And spray both sides with cooking spray. Helpful hint, place the tray on a baking sheet unless you want to get cooking spray all over the cutting board and the counter as we did. Then we'll place it into the air fryer on the toast setting and lightly toast. You can also do this in the oven under broil. This will help prevent the bread from getting soggy and breaking apart when in the soup. This is what we're looking for. Lightly golden and crunchy while still soft on the inside. The bread bowl is nicely toasted on all sides. 
And as an added bonus, the entire kitchen smells like warm bread. With all the preparations done, let's make the soup. In a large pot over high medium heat, we'll add extra virgin olive oil. And to it, we'll add our mountain of sliced onions. We'll toss the onions in the oil until all the pieces are coated. Then we'll add 1 fourth cup of water and close the lid. I know it seems counterintuitive, but the steam will heat all the onions at the same time and actually speed up the cooking process and save time. Once the onions are tender, we'll add butter and stir it in. The butter will give it a velvety feel and a rich taste. Keep stirring to evenly coat all the onions with butter. Then move the onions to the center and allow them to caramelize. This is perfect. This is what we want to see. The onions are beginning to stick to the bottom and caramelize. The sugar is slowly being released from the onions and reacting to the heat, turning into delicious complex flavors. We'll bring the onions to the center again and pat them down. We keep doing this until all the onions are beautifully caramelized. Once the onions begin to brown, we'll combine a pinch of baking soda and a tablespoon of water, then add it to the pot. This will lower the pH of the onions and extract more sugar as you'll see. You can also use cream of tartar if you don't have baking soda. We'll give it a second to activate and then stir. There, this is what we're looking for. The onions are beautifully brown and caramelized. Now we'll add 1 4th cup of brandy to deglaze the pot, scraping up the fawn that's formed at the bottom. The alcohol will actually burn off, leaving behind that wonderful taste. You can also use white wine for this, or if you're avoiding alcohol, just deglaze with vegetable stock. Next we'll add in all the aromatics, starting with the garlic, along with a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Our bay leaf. That bundle of fresh thyme. And the sprig of rosemary. We'll gently stir for about 30 to 60 seconds to allow the herbs to infuse the fat. These herbs work to complement the sweetness of the onions without overpowering the other ingredients and provide a more complex flavor and aroma. Then we'll add 6 cup of our homemade flavorful vegetable stock, made from various vegetable scraps and umami rich mushrooms and kombu, along with 1 teaspoon of salt. We're only adding a teaspoon because the vegetable stock already contains some salt, and the soup will reduce a little, increasing the concentration of salt. Then we'll close the lid and bring it to a boil and it will boil for about five minutes. And lastly, we'll add in one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar and give it a stir. The flavor and the acid of the vinegar again counters and complements the richness of the soup, adding another dimension to the flavor profile. Now for a taste test. Perfect, the soup is sweet, savory, and fragrant. We'll just remove the stems of our herbs and the bay leaf before we take it off the heat and set it aside. French onion soup is typically served with a crouton on top and some cheese. For this soup, we're using Gruyere. This is a traditional and popular choice. However, we also use Swiss and even provolone. They're great melting cheeses. Here we have a pound, and we'll shred about half of it, using the largest option on the shredder. Now to assemble. We'll ladle in the soup to our favorite soup bowl and leave a little space at the top for the toast. Now the toast for a risky landing. 
Next, we'll top it off with a generous portion of cheese. Then we'll transfer it to our tray. We'll also make our bread bowl by ladling the soup. Adding the lid and topping it off with a handful of cheese. Now to the air fryer. We'll place it just under the broiler and broil until the cheese is melted with little brown spots and the soup is bubbling. That's it. This looks good. Now we'll top it off with a little bit more fresh thyme and dig in. Hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoyed making it. If you make this soup, let us know in the comments below how you liked it. Also, click that thumbs up button and share this recipe with your friends and family. And remember, subscribe to follow our channel. We upload recipes every week and you don't want to miss out. You can find the full recipe at our website at BerryBerryLife.com. Just type in French onion soup in the search bar. Oh man, it's insane how good this soup is. If you've never had French onion soup before, you have got to try this recipe. You don't know what you're missing. There you have it, French onion soup. A taste of French cuisine and a soup of the people, right in the comfort of your own kitchen. Thank you for watching. Enjoy!